Shout out to ShinoFX on Patreon for three months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on this channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this animated chromatic sphere in Cinema 4D. It also doesn't have to be animated, I'm going to be showing you the whole animation thing and how it's done. Uh, but I'm actually using these for stills for a pack that will be dropping on my Patreon page soon. And then a smaller version will be coming to the YouTube channel for free as well. Uh, but I was doing some research and I stumbled upon um, this guy, Yoma Gik, uh, who is very popular on Behance. And I saw this little animation with this sphere and it really inspired me to try to recreate something similar. I didn't do it exactly how he did it. His is, I don't know, I guess it's a little better. And um, But I went about it and thought it'd be something cool to share because there's some cool techniques and things to show off for those interested. Uh, this Cinema 4D file will be available for my Patreon members, $5 and above, by the way, so you guys can download this right away. But if this video gets 100 likes, I will also post the Cinema 4D file uh, for you guys. So leave a like if you enjoy the tutorial or you wanna mess around with the file. But let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So I'm in my light studio just to set this all up and you don't need anything too crazy. You don't need a light room like I'm using. You can use a few basic lights or one of my free light rooms in like my 25K pack or whatever. Um, doesn't have to be anything too fancy. Um, obviously I'm gonna use what I have, which is this light studio, which is available in my store if you're curious, but we're gonna go ahead and drag a sphere into it not really drag a sphere we're going to pop a sphere into this and we'll increase the size a little bit so this is about 170 and the segments let's bump up to a hundred um, so we have a decent amount and if i pop the shading lines on you can see it's something like that and let's go ahead and grab a displacer and just get right into doing this let's drag the displacer onto the sphere and go to shading click the drop down and add a noise so you can see we have some distortion already let's click the little thumbnail and open this up and i'm going to leave the noise as a noise for now we can come back and change it later on but um, let's mess with these settings first so global scale i'm going to do 250 just so it's a little bigger and you notice that smooths it out a little bit if we go to relative scale then, we want to make this 1000, the first one, which will stretch it along the x-axis, pretty much. Um, you could do one of the other ones as well, but I think that's the best one to do. And if you're animating this, make sure the speed is at 1 and... Or, I mean, you could do whatever speed, and then the loop period, you could do 4 or whatever. Um, and I'm actually gonna mess around. I'm gonna make this speed 2. I have never done that before, so that might turn off awful, or turn out awful, but mm, whatever. We'll give it a try, and if I give this a quick little test look, actually let me turn off all this stuff. If we give this a little test look, you can see we're already pretty close to the effect we're going for. Um, but we want to add another thing here, which is a twist, and make sure that is below the displacer. Click fit to parent, and then increase the angle, and this will kind of just stretch out some of those areas. So around 300, you can see we start to get a nice um, kind of a clothy look, but it looks real, but it looks very similar to what we want, which is nice. We have to smooth it out though. So grab a subdivision surface and put the sphere into that. So we have some smooth kind of wrinkles going on. And there we go, that's a lot better. And if we go and press play, you can see we already have our effect going on. It's looking pretty nice. The speed at two is working for me I kind of like that um, come to your frames though and bump them up you could do whatever you like about 30 frames is a second so I'm gonna do 150 frames and drag my timeline out so I can see them all so that's about five seconds of time and that is basically the object setup it's real simple um, you can now come into the displacer if you'd like and mess with the noise um, I'm going to come in and go to the height and make it about 15 so we get a little more shadow, uh, a little, little more shadows, a little more um, places for reflection, which is real important for the material we're going to use, which by the way is the next step. We want to add 
a nice reflective material. So I'm using one of my own materials as a base, um, and this is from my V7 pack. It's just a chrome material. I'm gonna show you guys kind of how it works so you can recreate it yourself. So if we open this up, it's just an all black color, and that's not very important. Um, the important part is the reflectance. So you will by default have a uh, specular. So you wanna go to add and do a reflection legacy, which is the default reflection for me. Um, and then on the default specular, make sure that's set to add. And you wanna just copy the settings I have here. Since this is a material I created a long time ago for a project, I don't really remember all the settings I messed with. So feel free to just copy these down. Uh, I'll go through them real fast. So obviously the type, uh, you wanna go make sure this is additive, width 83, fall off negative 31, 23% inner width, 98% um, specular strength, bump strength is 100. And then I believe the layer color and the layer mask are the uh, defaults then. And you wanna leave the layer color open for now. We will be messing with that in a second. And then in the reflection, the only thing that's different is the layer sampling, I believe. Um, so the sampling subdivisions, you wanna make seven. And then I think these might be the defaults, but you wanna do eight as a clamp secondary and 0 0.001 cutoff exit color black. And that's about it for that. Also make sure your layer color is open still. And we can make sure this is 100%, mine's at 92, but we'll bump it up. So let's just give this a quick test. If we drag it onto the sphere, it will just be a very reflective kind of wrinkly sphere, but you can kind of see where it's going. Um, so yeah, you can see this looks pretty neat with all the reflections going on. Uh, so let's go ahead and add our colors to this. So if we open up the material again, go to reflectance, go to one of these, we'll, we're in the reflection one first. So go to layer color, texture, the drop down effects, and go to spectral. And if we open that up, you can see we have this gradient of some pretty colors and that's fine. Let's go to the other specular and do the same thing. And this is one option you can do. So if we give this a quick render, you can see it's gonna be using those colors that just showed up in the gradient. And this looks fine, the default, but we're gonna change the gradients to something a little better a little more color uh, and a little more colors in general to mix it up a little bit. Um, but you can see that doesn't look too bad. Let's open it up again, click on it, and let's go to the spectrum. And I actually have a gradient saved in my presets. It's called gradient. And I'm gonna pop that on here. And you can see we have seven colors here. You can create your very own gradient. Just choose whatever colors you want to be featured in the reflection. Uh, I'll show you exactly what I have here first so I'm gonna be showing you the hex codes so the first color is a light blue and it's B5 F3 FF then we have a pink which is D152 FF then we have red FF7373 blue 4C E9 FD purple 6400 CF yellow D8 E65 E and then another light blue which is 73 D6 E6 so you can copy that exactly or make your own colors, whatever you'd like. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is come to the out of range type and set it to mirror. The variation, I'm gonna set to 150 and the intensity to 300. And then if we click back and hit the little drop down on that and go to copy shader, go to the, uh, the other color or the other reflection or specular, depending on what you were in and paste it into that one as well. So now both of these have that same gradient going on. And you can see our material preview up here changed a bit. I'm gonna go to my specular here at the top and make the opacity 50, just so there's a little more dark areas. And that should be it for the material. If we give this a render now, you can see we'll have more colors. We're getting that like oily look, which is what I was kind of going for. And it looks real nice in my opinion. 
and yeah so it looks real cool if we play it the animations looking good so one thing that I noticed when I rendered mine out you can see here this is the render it looks pretty good but all the colors kind of stay in the same spot and in the second one the colors move with the animation so to get them to move with the animation you just want to move your lights a little bit with it um, or that's an easy way to do it you can mess with the material and do some other things but this is the easiest way in my opinion to do this um, so if you have a few lights uh, that you set up make sure you right click and group them or press alt G mine are obviously already in a group and I'm gonna pop out so I can see all these other views have the move tool um, ready and then come to your access tool and click that and we basically want to set up the axis in the middle of our sphere which my middle point was way off so let's get that it doesn't have to be perfect either it just has to be generally there and that should work Go back and make sure you click that again so you're no longer moving the axis. Click on the null here and go to coordinates. And we want to go to this B one, or the bottom one. So right now it says negative 90 for me. And I'm going to go to zero on the timeline. And I'm going to click the little red dot to the left, which is the keyframe. And I'm going to go to the very end, 150. And then what I'm going to do is at the end of this negative 90, I'm going to do plus 360, hit enter. And then this should turn to orange. We're going to click that and that will make the keyframe. So if I go through, you can see our lights are spinning and then that gradient should move as well. Um, it's just a real simple way to do that. If we play it, it'll look pretty nice. And yeah, I'm happy with that. Obviously, I can't do the full render for you guys because it'll take a few hours and I can show you the previews I already have. But um, that's how you go about doing that. And then if you want to do stills, which is something that I've been doing, uh, you can take the sphere and get your scaling tool and just scale it up so you're a little closer and get in these different spots. And then if you have an animation ready, like I did, so I would play this and look for... Um, let me pause it. I would play this and kind of look for um, spots that look nice with a bunch of variations. So like something like that would work. And then I would try to find that point. Um, so you can see that's two seconds. So that was about frame 60 some. And I would go to it and then I'd render that out. Zoomed in a little bit so it can make it a texture or background, whatever. Also, if I go back here, you can go ahead and mess with things like the twist and the displacer. So I think originally I had about 500 set as the twist. You get more of these like wrinkles going on with that. Um, and it might be too much. It might look a little funky. So you have to find that happy medium. Um, 400 would probably look good. And then of course the displacer you can come back in and mess with further. Not 300, we'll do 30. And that just gives you more extreme shadows and different looks. So feel free to experiment as much as you want. You can see a lot of darker areas when you increase that. Um, it actually looks pretty, pretty neat doing that. And then of course you can mess with the noise that you have selected. Um, but anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a like. At 100 likes, you guys can download this file for your use. I will include the material. I won't include the Lightroom since it's a paid for product in my store. But you guys will get the sphere and everything um, nonetheless. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this. Also some free stuff on the way including the pack of chromatic uh, textures that I'm going to be releasing from this. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Follow my Instagram that's Quezzy. Check out my store if it interests you and if you want to support me on Patreon to have these videos keep coming. Check it out in the description below. You guys can get a bunch of free goods, or not free goods, you're paying for them, but you get a bunch of goods and uh, do things like weekly goods. You get all my project files, stuff like that. So check it out if it interests you. It helps keep these videos coming. So any support there is much appreciated. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.